Not here. That's why he's got a video. He is up at GDC right now with Emily and Cameron. So he recorded a video for everybody, which we get to look at giant head right now. And there's a possibility of the audio won't work, so if that happens, sorry. It's not my fault. You better be good at reading lips. <laughs> You're gonna learn fast. We have no audio. Yeah. Nothing. What a motivational speech. Dude. Such is made of words. <laughs> It's in the wrong audio jack. That's why. Let's try this again. Part two. Nope. Uh, I got well, it. Hmm. Oh, you got it. Apparently, this isn't working. Here, one sec. All I got was high VGDA. I think I got this. I am. Uh, hi there, VGDA. Uh, welcome to GDC. This is kind of what we're looking at here. Uh, this is the IGF Pavilion, indie games and stuff. Uh, so, Emily and Cameron and I have been spending the last few days uh, crazily running around, meeting a lot of people, and telling them about how awesome uh, you guys are and uh, all the work that you do. And so, uh, one of the things we've been finding out is that, yeah, uh, the things that we do are pretty incredible. Uh, everyone's really been blown away pretty consistently by the level of organization that we have uh, and that we display and the way that uh, we're able to take a whole lot of uh, new developers and get a, get a game shipped regularly. So um, we've made a lot of great connections here. Uh, two from Blizzard, and people really from all over the world. We've been talking to people from New Zealand, we've been talking to people from New York, Florida. Um, we did not get into the Nordic party last night, which we were kind of bummed about. I really wanted to go see what those guys were. Apparently that party gets pretty crazy. Instead, what we did last night is we ended up posting kind of an impromptu round table where us and about uh, 20 other developers uh, came through and uh, kind of critiqued VGDA, what we do, and uh, gave us some uh, really solid advice that we're going to be incorporating over the next couple semesters. Um, and again, they were just utterly fascinated by the students who can somehow work in a team of 100 people and get a game made. So really, congratulations to all of you guys. You guys have been doing really amazing work, and I'm super excited to come back and uh, see what uh, what Adagio is looking like, which I guess we have a name for, uh, Echoes of Tacoon, which I'm super excited about. Um, so, yeah, uh, GDC's just been an amazing networking opportunity for all of us, um, and uh, we've been doing a lot of networking for VGDA, and uh, I think we have, between the three of us, about 400 business cards from various people who want to learn more about VGDA and what it is we do. So, um, definitely we're going to be having uh, more stuff for the dev kit uh, coming up, like any developers are lining up to uh, get a crack at uh, teaching, at teaching young game developers um, more of what they've learned in the indie sphere. Uh, and also to show off, get a chance to show off their games is something I'm really excited about. And uh, large developers too are really interested in um, potentially getting employees or uh, particular employees who already know the large scale game, game development pipeline. So um, yeah, that's what GDC has been looking like for us. We've met a lot of cool people. Uh, we met the uh, lead designer for uh, we went. The lead designer for uh, the World of Warcraft team, we met the, the, the design producer for the World of Warcraft team, uh, our friend Brian Kindergan, who's the uh, lead design, who's uh, lead writer on the Diablo team, was here as well, so we were able to meet up with him. Um, I did not find Kate, Ed I have not met up with Kate Edwards yet. Um, I know she's around somewhere, uh, so I'm kind of seeing if uh, I can meet up with her, get some lunch, and she can tell us about how awesome we are more. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I'm running out of space on my phone, so I will see you guys. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we'll never right know. Right on his face. Yeah, you really did. That's the end of the video. All right, cool. Appreciate so that was intentional. That's pretty much all Nathan's got to say there. As far as I can tell. So who's up first? Which team? We got content right here. Okay. Except it's the nine. See, I don't just, I don't get it wrong. Your team got it wrong this time. Did I did I put oh it said uh, content. I did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We turned the yep. got no, no, this is part of our presentation. No, no, it's not. <laughs> we don't need any more sound, right? No more no. sound. No. No. no more sound. Okay. Bye. Okay, so welcome everyone to this week of PGA stuff. I'm Ashley, Narrative Sudley. I'm uh, Elijah, the design uh, for gameplay so far. So, this is our title, Echoes of Tikkun. Um, yes. uh, just, just to explain the, the, our rationale for this title, um, Tikkun is a Hebrew word that means healing and repairing. And um, in our mythology, there is a, a supreme god who, um, with nine other gods, creates the world. And he creates the world and tries to enter it and destroys it by accident. So um, what they're trying, their, their whole mission, the nine gods, the whole mission is to go back to this earth and try to repair it. And how they, how this, this is, this narrative is, Driven is remnants of this divine song that they have to remake. So, Dikun is about repairing this world, and then the echoes is like the echoes from the primordial era of, of the world. So we felt like this this title really encompassed the world that this story is taking place in, and that's our rationale for the title. Um, uh, we have the tutorial in level one uh, rough complete. Uh, what that means is that we have um, the tutorial in level one have been scripted. So all we really need to do now is go back in and fine tune it and make sure it's game ready. Um, we will be doing roughs for level two and level three at tomorrow's Dev Jam. Um, our mythology is currently in progress. Um, we're wo working closely with art to uh, conceptualize our gods. Um, the story beats from the mythology are complete, so we know basically what happens in the history of this world. Um, so, like I said, the supreme god creates the nine gods. Together they create the world. The supreme god tries to enter the world, destroys it by accident. He exiles himself and uh, tasks the nine gods with going and trying to find remnants of, of his song to recreate the world. They do, um, but there is a schism. There are three dark gods, or evil gods. Um, one of them decides that um, it's cruel for humanity to have existed because there's only death and destruction. They can't know the eternal god like they did. So the, our three gods are kind of freaked out by this, and then the three neutral gods are like, let's chill, let's, let's talk about this. And so the three gods, they agree, but they actually attack them. And so that's what we're calling the schism. So the, the three evil gods are driven away, the three neutral gods say, at this, we're going to do our own thing. And so the three good gods remain with humanity, and they go forward and try to heal the world. So that's, that's, our, that's our mythological narrative. Um, and that is the history of the world that Zimri is moving through in our primary story, which is what the player will be going through. <clears throat> the FAQ and the glossary um, are updated every so often. They were updated this week um, with more glossary terms. Like, for example, the three gods that will be in the game, Order, Grace, and Splendor, their collective name, are, they're called the Samara. Samara is a Hebrew name, an anglicized Hebrew name that means guardian or mountain protector. Um, so we thought that was pretty appropriate. So the three gods are called the Samara. Um, and just more like mythological terms have been updated. Uh, if you think that would be useful to you to reference and see what design is doing, it's located in our Trello under necessary relevant resources if you want to check that out. And that's basically where we are there. Okay, and so for gameplay, we got to go back onto puzzles this past week, and so we have the uh, concept for eight of the nine core puzzles, because we're, there's going to be three puzzles for each of the gods that are uh, function as the core ones, and will be put in a specific order. And 
the generation. And so uh, for, for order, we have uh, everything's based around, uh, around rhythm type stuff, and we're using um, like bells and other percussive type instruments for it. For grace, uh, there's going to be um, just everything's based around like listening and matching. And so we have uh, flutes, uh, gong, and drums, and then a really cool puzzle that we made for our Tibetan singing balls, which is my favorite one that I got to do. Um, and then for Splendor, everything's going to be more uh, harmony and chord creation. So we have two of those done, but then the third final one for her that we want to do, we're going to work on tomorrow at the Dev Jam, because uh, since it's going to be the last one that's generated, we wanted to kind of combine a bit of everything that, that has happened in the other puzzles together and to have multiple instruments, so it'll be the most complex out of all of them. And then, okay, so for, for stuff that we're going to be getting done next, uh, finishing that final chord puzzle, and then we're going to be creating uh, concepts for uh, two additional puzzles for each of those, which will be randomly uh, generated within uh, whatever order, since there will be dead ends and things will split off in the generation. Uh, and so then uh, we will, we've been working on making sure that all of the assets for each of these puzzles that we've been doing uh, really get solidified so that we can work with uh, sound and art on making sure that uh, all the instruments we need are done and then all of the, the assets that we need to actually make the puzzles visually work are also uh, solidified. And then uh, we've also, me and Ashley have been talking about uh, how we're going to implement actually getting uh, bits of narrative that, that aren't just in the background mural into the actual uh, gameplay uh, of the puzzles, and so we're, we're working on a way of, within the actual setup of the puzzle, having scrolls or some other type of thing to actually present more small bits of the narrative that, that uh, just function within the actual design of the puzzle room. So that's where we're at. Questions, Questions comments, concerns, complaints? Hatred. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Okay. No? Okay. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. as always was super helpful. Uh, it was uh, it took place on Tuesday and um, as always thanks to, to those who joined us. Uh, again like we I really really appreciate that you guys take time out of your day to um, and especially that late in the night. Um, we usually go a little bit past 12 and you know you guys don't need to stay the entire time but all of you always do. So I think that's really cool. Um, two points were distributed to participants, to participants in the poll. Okay so um, these are some of our final pieces of concept art, concept art for order. Um, we really wanted to uh, bring into the fold the mythology, so we had Ashley join us uh, for the call, um, and we really tried to incorporate all of the uh, motifs and uh, the way that order would carry herself, and um, we wanted to uh, uh, really include all of these attributes that were um, you know, in, on paper um, into our visual assets. Um, this one right here, I really like the uh, scroll that she got. Um, uh, that she's holding there it kind of reminds me of um, justice in front. You know, the statue of justice in front of the courthouse, um, and um, it brings an air of solemnity to it. And I also like the way that uh, it's being rendered in statue form, even though um, that's not exactly what we're going for right now. Uh, I think this is a good look to the future as to how the assets for the statues may be made. Um, some more of these. Uh, we really liked the, uh, the I guess, dynamic feel of the one on the right. And um, we like the way that it, uh, there's, there are a lot of these designs that kind of uh, fell out at the bottom because that is a very stable form. Things that fell out at the bottom usually do not fall over. Um, so uh, order as she is the last one standing, I think, is very big. Um, these are some of Jordan's pieces. I really liked the, um, we had this 
like confusion as to as to what to call this particular piece of the of the uh, you know wardrobe there, and uh, we just came to um, calling it a chess piece. But that chess piece right there um, really gives it some volume and um, puts some weight on the character uh, because even though uh, she's already stable, I think some more weight would allow her to really stabilize herself as an object um, in the physical world. So. Um, adding more mass to order is probably a good thing. So this is our finalization process. This is exactly where I put up last week for Zimmer. And um, we went through all of the designs by HRs within the last two weeks. We made observations on successful elements, uh, chose skeleton, and then we went on to craft successful elements onto that skeleton. Then we started talking about how to make the adjust adjustments on that particular. <coughs> so um, order will be fi officially finalized. Um, I, I would even say before this weekend, uh, we're really coming to a head on that. Um, the fresco and uh, the environment, environmental assets, statues, and hub will all be based on our finalized design. So, um, her finalized design will not be in itself the statue. Um, the statues will be based off of how she looks like as a god. So, uh, I think that that's a good way to deviate um, and maybe have different uh, ways of to to interpret her in each medium that we see through. Um, and without further ado here, the skeleton designs decided upon during this discussion. Um, this is one of them. Uh, the, the elaborate circle patterns that we see here are um, they're very nice, and they, they really, really help round out the character and like describe what, uh, who she is. Um, in the um, mythology, she uses uh, these things. Uh, it, it's very vaguely described, but um, that's part of the beauty of it is um, that she spins her wheels within wheels. Um, and I think a lot of our artists uh, were able to kind of glean from that and uh, incorporate it into their uh, pieces. Um, like I said, trapezoidal elements convey stability. And uh, the spoke wheel, I really, really like because it um, kind of loose Buddhism. I know that we have a very uh, Jewish-based or um, uh, Kabbalah-based um, mythos. But I feel like um, since we do have elements in the architecture and um, maybe even the clothing uh, that that allude to uh, Buddhism, I think having that uh, permeate more than just um, our character or the architecture and really having it bleed into the gods, um, I think that is a very useful device to pull everything together. Okay, so this is our second design that we designed on, a uh, second skeleton. Um, so what we're going to do with these two skeletons is try to merge uh, them together. Um, this one, um, it's, it's, simple, uh, it's simple in this design, so it kind of suits order. Uh, the gaping hole in the middle uh, conveys the symbol of her power, so instead of um, the wheels being without her, she, she is kind of, she has a wheel within her. And, um, and that's where she draws her power from, and um, it's a symbol of her divine otherworldliness. And um, the bold gesture, uh, influenced by the Vitruvian man, kind of um, brings harmony and order to um, all life. So um, it's kind of a, a, an allusion to the golden mean and all that. And uh, I think that that might be effective in conjunction with the design that we have just presented earlier. So, um, this is one of the animations, or a silhouetted animation for Zinri's turn cycle. Um, and uh, turn cycle, as if it would just repeat like this. But, um, <laughs> This turn animation is going to look something like this. Um, all that's left to do here is to block out the shapes and the color that um, that's represented by, or that represents each um, each object that is there. And um, we will. I'm still working on the walk animation myself. Um, I didn't have enough time to finish it or incorporate it to this uh, this week, but it is almost done. So. Um, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, and this is very, very close to completion itself, so um, look forward to maybe seeing both of these in the next uh, meeting. Uh, we've got some concept art for the gods. Uh, I think this is the only new piece that we've got up because everybody was so focused on finalizing order. And um, this is a, a grace piece, and I like that um, it's deviating from, it's not what we think when we, uh, when we uh, think to like a, think of a figure or um, a figurative god. I think this is a good way to kind of um, move away from that and think uh, more um, like outside the box so that we can incorporate this kind of design into whatever we decide on um, later on. And I think it really pulls.
or some other worldly, or worldly mess into the cars. Um, this is, uh, well, these are going to be our world building environmental assets for, uh, for this week. <coughs> um, this is a design by Aaron, and um, it's, um, I'm not exactly sure what the, um, what he's trying to imply here, but um, I do kind of like the, uh, the kind of maze elements that he's, that he's putting in here. Um, although uh, it's not exactly an asset that we need, I think that it's something that we can think about when we incorporate motifs or symbols into the um, architecture or um, maybe even some of the um, puzzle elements. So. Uh, this is uh, something that was done uh, for the gong or the bell. Um, I think that a bell kind of reads better because a gong in profile would just read as a line um, or a bar. And um, I think a bell would also um, have a large swaying motion and when it's really being animated, you can see how monumental it is by how slow it moves. And it would really add a lot of depth to, um, to the scene when uh, you go ahead and finish a puzzle. Um, this is one of the harps, or this is the harp um, that, uh, that was also done um, according to design's um, uh, document. Um, and I think that uh, this is very, very close to the visual style that we're going for in this game. Um, I think thanks uh, to Haley, uh, she created the style guide and it really, really is helping to um, pull all the assets together and uh, have them look the same. Um, this is something that just, uh, I, I did up really quickly last night. Um, this is something that is, th this is, I'm trying to emulate the foreground layer here. Um, so this entire box will be our play space, and these assets here are what's going to be in the foreground. Of course, it's just a rough, uh, it's not something I can, I'm going to at the moment, but this is just to show you guys how I think that, um, uh, these things will work in that layer. Uh, what it's going to happen is that this layer is going to be blown up a little bit bigger than the actual play space, play space. And as Zimri moves throughout the map, these objects will move at a slightly quicker pace, making um, making it seem like it's closer to you. And, um, and in opposition to this, it will be a background that has uh, similar assets that are more cast in light, and that will help us uh, really separate Zimri into or put Zimri into his own space. Uh, this is what I'm really, really excited about because these are the game stages of our price scale. I mean, not that I'm, I'm not excited about the rest of it, but um, this uh, this is um, just some initial concepts of, of motifs and symbols that was done up by Haley. And um, I think that it's simple enough to read from far away. It's, um, it's effective, it's geometric. Uh, it, reads along really well with the background, and the elements that are um, the most, I guess, uh, primordial are the circular ones, and that really sets those ones apart from the more earthly um, elements that are more geometric, um, and I think that is a really, really powerful effect, and just the amount of variations here um, grants so much potential to what we can do uh, on a first day. Um, this is a design for the uh, font that we're going to be using in the game by Michael, um, and um, I think that he's pretty close to completion here. Um, he unfortunately can't uh, can't continue with us for the rest of the semester, but uh, he's going to have us or he's going to send all the files that he can to us, to us, and uh, we'll pick up where he left off. And I don't think he left much work left, uh, for us um, anyway. So. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty much uh, what we're going to be using for our uh, title card or our, uh, our starting screen. Um, tasks completed. We did concept art on the gods, world building environments and UI. Uh, we finalized order and some of the environment assets. Finalize, or we're looking forward to final, finalizing the next god, most likely Grace, because she comes in second um, uh, in terms of gods. 
Um, we will also be finalizing the walk and turn animations, uh, some more puzzle elements, and uh, we'll conceptualize environments, background assets, since there are so many of them, I've, I've included them here for like the fourth week in a row, but um, uh, they're of utmost importance. So, um, and we're also going to conceptualize Blender before we finalize her the week after that, and we're going to conceptualize more fresco. We will begin to animate the idle animation and the playing music. Okay, so just to reiterate, um, next week we'll have finalized assets for two of three gods. Um, walk cycle turn, uh, more environments. Uh, on the 31st, we'll have finalized assets for all three gods. We'll, play, uh, we'll be able to play music with the Zimmering, and we'll uh, have an idle animation form as well. And we'll have even more environmental assets. And I think at this point in the game, uh, we're really just trying to push out as much as we can. Uh, a lot of the conceptual um, work has been done already. Um, and I think as if we are just able to keep the pace that we're on right now, um, we will be able to hit every single thing that we are are planning to hit. So um, I'm really proud of I'm really, I'm really proud of the uh, young team. I'm proud of, and this, this is for the art team, or to all of you guys. Um, and um, I think that uh, if we're able to yeah just keep this pace, then we'll, we'll be so, um, any questions, comments, or concerns? Good. Okay. Do you have a PowerPoint for it? Okay. Any PowerPoint? Uh, no PowerPoint. Alright. Yeah. Can you listen to some PowerPoint? Cameron works with the uh, composers and all the music stuff. Uh, my specialty is the sound effects. So, um, right now, I guess you consider this the acquisition stage of sound effects for um, uh, Takun, uh, which that means is I just get to hoard all the sound effects that I could possibly find on the internet and put them onto my computer. Um, so, with that hoarding, I found two things. Thank you, Josh, for. Um, finding the free package of sound effects. Every single one of these things is a different library of effects, and every folder has its own set of folders inside of those, and that's just one. And I found this other one called Sound Ideas, and as you can see, there are all of these, all of those, and all of those, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of like assets, we're loaded. Um, Whatever you guys can think of, design or art or whatever comes to mind, we have it, basically. Or if not, we can actually like, mix those together and make whatever we need. Um, on the other side of that, um, I've been trying to figure out how to use this thing called the WISE. It's, it's a audio middleware, I guess you could say. Instead of having the programmers do all of the audio work, like in a, uh, putting it to sound objects and setting events and states, I can actually do that from this thing. And for example, hopefully it's that. So this is a timeline of a day, or you could say it as a state. So zero being midnight up to here, this is the middle of the day. And as the character moves from one point to another, it goes into a night end. So what we can do is instead of setting uh, 
night, day, we could put, say, a cave back in, or sorry, outside of the cave in the beginning of the game to cave in the middle of the game to sunny, happy, outside of the cave again at the end. This is like stupidly complicated to work with. I've been actually just trying to figure out how to do it using a, a PDF online that has like a tutorial. But um, hopefully by the end of this project, I'll be able to figure out how to use what we need for our game, put it into here, and hopefully we can work it out with programming and make something really cool. That's it. Look presenting, okay? Uh, for next week, uh, we're going to 
going going to get the mechanics for the player movement and jump are for for uh, for mobile, and we're all going to work on puzzles and much much more. Well, let's switch to the demo. Drag this is over here. So this is our tutorial. So this right here is the cave cave opening, and the tutorial is pretty simple. What do I do? Jump up there. Double jump up here. This is this is the door. You press it. Opens up the door. This is walkway towards the hub. So that 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 was where that I started. Okay, uh, so this is probably a good example of of it not uh, spawning <laughs> very well. Uh, the, these uh pictures the, 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 uh, <laughs> right. right here. All right, so we we have a array of. Uh, Prefabs that once once we're done with puzzles, we can swap those pictures with the puzzles, and it'll randomly spawn uh, puzzles. Was that one Splendor? Or, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. Hey, I think, I'm pretty sure that one's Splendor. Actually, I think about it. Uh, so as you can see, I'm no longer able to jump infinitely. Uh, the final, okay, the final is up there. <laughs> the game's in free hour. <laughs> <laughs> this is consistent. Wonderful. Okay, 
I think this is gonna work this time. Usually if it takes forever, that means it's working. So why, why is it taking forever? <laughs> Just a question. Uh, because the uh, generation is pretty complicated. Yeah. Uh, well, kind of. Well, uh, one, one of the main tasks this week is we're um, going to have it check for whatever it uh, creates a corridor if it's going over a pre-existing corridor or a room, it'll uh, fix that. Um, that's that, that's that's pretty much all I have. I think that's pretty much it. Unless there's anyone I forgot about. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, that's all we got. Everybody, scrums. Uh, oh, yeah, level ups. There you go. Peter. Level ups. T-shirts. Oh. T-shirts. What's up? T-shirts. Okay. Should we wait? Or will she be arriving later? Okay. Well, we can do scrums before that and we can do a t-shirt and after that. One second. Get this back. Alright, so, those of you who are leveling, leveling up, there's the three of you. Alright, which yeah, so we're all here. For technical, we have Down Down. Down Down. Not here. Just to get a sneak. We tried. Alright, and then for our team. There's only one Down Down. Our team? Yeah, our team. We have Ellen Wong. Do you want a Twix or a Snickers? Oh. Oh, we'll come back to you. All right. No, 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 no. Um, Twix. 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 It's a hard choice, you know. And Sarah Chen. You get a Snickers. The good news is Peter is much better at aiming than Nate. Yeah. I've learned. You learned from last semester. All right. And that's all we got. So, now scrums. <laughs> but we will have an announcement about t-shirts later.